You may well have noticed the extensive news coverage of the decision by the High Court of Kenya, of all places, to continue to criminalize homosexuality, to, to give authenticity to the former colonial laws which uh, condemned the entire LGBT community. Now, on the face of it, I suppose people would say, well, that's a backward step. Obviously it is, but in an odd way. The extent of the coverage, very unusual, suggests that, that people want to draw attention to the fact that Kenya is out of step with much of the progress in the international community generally, and therefore it may be a good thing to focus on these transgressions of human rights in order to restore an element of sanity. Now, Kenya is not really out of sync with the rest of the African continent, unfortunately. 33 of the 54 countries have laws which criminalize homosexuality. In Kenya itself, you can go to jail for 15 years if you've been caught as a homosexual. And in some countries, for example, Mauritania, Sudan, Somalia, northern Nigeria, where there's Sharia law, you can be a homosexual, but it's punishable by death if the sexual orientation is discovered. It's a very severe situation, and in terms of health, uh, globally, uh, fully 28%, or, or let me put it another way, for, for gay men, they are 28 times as likely to be HIV positive as the general population. So you can see how, how grievous this is, because gay men go underground. They're frightened at the stigma, at the discrimination, at the putative nature of the courts. They don't get tested. They don't get treated. They live lives of, of, of helpless isolation. Now, in truth, things are moving in a positive direction in many aspects, and one shouldn't forget that. In Kenya, I would bet that the High Court decision will be challenged. They'll appeal it to the Supreme Court of Kenya, which is a much more progressive court, which may well invalidate the High Court's judgment. And there's another constitutional case coming, a constitutional challenge to the criminalization of HIV. And since so many gay men are involved, it's another way of accentuating the rights of the LGBT community if we win this other case. And then there are countries in Africa which are decriminalizing. Countries like Angola and Mozambique and Seychelles. And uh, there's an article in the Canadian national newspaper, The Globe and Mail, a very good article from which I have, have filched shamelessly, which indicates that in June, this coming month of June, uh, there may well be decriminalization in Botswana. So you see, we're, we're moving ahead. The thing that's missing is having strong voices in countries like Canada speak out strongly against the High Court decision. Try to shame Kenya into realizing that they're out of sync with much of the world. When uh, the Vice President of the United States visits Canada, as he's done in the last 24 hours, Mike Pence is in a way upbraided by the Prime Minister of Canada for the attack on abortion laws in several states in the United States. Well, that same kind of criticism has to be rendered when you get the judgment we just got from the High Court of Kenya. Because, you know, the judgment was in many ways ridiculous. They said that they were upholding the culture and values of Kenya. That's the old cultural relativism argument which was defrocked decades ago. And then they say that, that decriminalization of homosexuality could lead to same-sex marriage. If I may, duh! What we're doing is changing things. It's slow and sometimes painful, but it's changing. That was last week. I'm Stephen Lewis.